Hi, and welcome to this demo of integrating Extreme iOS 6.1 with Dell EMC AppSync. What I'm going to demonstrate today is a technical preview of a feature that will come out in Xios 6.1, our upcoming major release. And one of the new features of that release is the ability to integrate into Dell EMC AppSync. Dell EMC AppSync, if you're not familiar with that product, is a product that allows you to take application consistent backup of your either VMs or physical servers whether those are just generic VMs or Microsoft SQL or Oracle database and the ability to then take the database and either just use it for backup and restore purposes or for copy data management purposes which means that you can take the database for example and repurpose it to your test and dev environments X amount of time uh, this of course is using the extremely unique snapshot capabilities using as XVC in any case, this specific feature that I'm going to show you today is going to give you the ability to backup uh, VMs and restore either VMs or data stores, VMFS data stores, directly within the Extreme UI known as the XMS Web UI. So the first thing you need to do is, of course, make sure that we have the AppSync server installed, which we do have in this case. And if you can see, I've already created an ES6 cluster containing a couple of VMs that I'm going to use throughout the demo for backup and restore purposes. The first step that we need to do is create an AppSync user that the XMS can then go ahead and use. So if you go to the system users uh, administration, you can see that I've already created a user called XMS underscore AppSync underscore user. This user has to have this specific uh, username and you need to give it a specific roles, which are in my case are the configuration role. And as you can see, I've already selected all of them. The same needs to be done at the XMS side. So if I go to the XMS system setting, security setting, I can see that I've already have this user called XMS AppSync user. This user was uh, already created. The one thing I will need to do is change his password to match the exact same password that I did and created on the AppSync side. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, that's done. The next step that we need to do is to connect the XMS to the AppSync server. So in order to do that, we need to go to System Setting and AppSync. And as you can see, there are no AppSync server currently configured, so I'm going to add and, and go ahead and do it. Press the Add button and specify the AppSync uh, server, DNS or IP address. It's important to know that the XMS will need to have DNS uh, resolution working between itself to the AppSync server. So know that you need to have it in place, which I do. I'm going to leave the CAS port and the HTTPS ports by, uh, on their default. Unless you change them on the AppSync side, there shouldn't be a reason to touch those here as well. And I'm going to use the username that I just created with its password. And then press the Add button. Once you discover the AppSync uh, server, which again, we can clarify from going here. See that the AppSync is connected and the vCenter has been already detected because AppSync has already detected the vCenter we can go ahead and actually create a protection plan. So in the context of AppSync, there are three built-in protection plans, silver, gold, and bo What they mean is different type of protection, which mean local protection using snapshot, remote protection using uh, our upcoming native replication or recover point, or a mixture of both. For the purpose of the technical preview, what we are going to actually support is just local snapshots only. So I can either go ahead and copy an existing one and modify it, which is what I did in this case. Uh, so for example, if we double click the local extreme or snapshot, it will see the service plan uh, properties, which means, for example, how frequent should I take a backup? In the case of VM, do I want to have a VM snapshot running as opposed to just crash consistent type of snapshot and so on? And this is the AppSync UI. And of course, I can do exactly the same with the AppSync uh, XMS UI. But the first thing I want to do is go ahead and discover all the data stores that I may go ahead and protect. So in order to do it, I'm just going to go to the AppSync tab, data stores, and discover. The XMS will then go ahead and instruct the AppSync server to go ahead and discover my existing infrastructure, which is what we see here. And for the first part of the demo, what I'm going to do is going to take this specific data store that's running existing on this specific array and subscribe it to an AppSync service plan. So in order to do it, I can either go ahead and modify these specific service plans that, as I mentioned before, I can instruct them how frequent should I run the backup, 
whether I want to take a virtual machine snapshot in addition to crash consistent, yes or no, and other options as well, like do I want to mount that snapshot after it's been taken and so on and so forth. The one that you're probably going to put a lot of emphasis is this one. Do you want to take a VM consistent in addition to crash consistent? If you select yes, what it will then go ahead and do is use VMware based snapshots followed by an array level snapshot that should give you the best application consistency when you take a snapshot. Uh, and of course, you can select them yes or no, it's up to you to decide. For the case of this demo, I'm not going to take VM based consistent snapshot, I'm just going to use the array crash consistency level of snapshot. So this is my service plan already created. So what I'm going to do ahead now and go ahead and do is just subscribe a specific uh, data store to that service plan. So how do I do it? Once I discovered all the data stores, and in my case, this is the one that I'm going to protect, I'm just going to press the protect button and subscribe to a service plan. In return, AppSync will show me all the service plan that has been created. And as I mentioned before, I've already created this one, and this is the one that I'm going to use. So in order to use it, I'm just going to select it and press the subscribe button. And once that is done, I can actually go ahead and tell it to run the specific job now or to wait for the next interval for that specific service plan to take a snapshot. So I'm just going to click the run now. And again, select the service plan that I've selected to run now, as opposed to wait for the next cyclic interval to take that snapshot. And it will now go ahead and actually do those things for me. It will take a crash level consistent snapshot from the array itself and will give me a lot of information that I'm going to show you in a sec. Okay, the backup has been concluded. And as you can see, I can already see that I have a volume that was taking a part of a snapshot for that interval. I can also go to the virtual machine tab and see which VMs are protected as part of this data store, which indeed it's VM01 and VM02. And the other tab that I can also explore is alerts. So for example, here I populated AppSync with a lot of fake positive alerts, just so you can see the type of job, whether the job ran properly or not, and so on and so forth. So now that I have my backup up and running, I have two options. I can either restore the entire data store and by clicking the restore button, which will then go ahead and restore the entire data store with all the VMs inside of it. That's one option. And option number two that is probably more likely to happen is to restore a specific VM. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And in order to do it, what I'm going to go ahead now and do and go back to the vSphere web client and actually delete uh, one VM. So let's go ahead and do it. I've got my VM01. I just shut it down. I actually want to go ahead and delete it completely from that data store that I just took a backup of. So that's it, the VM has now been deleted. And let's assume that VM01 got corrupted or somebody mistakenly deleted it. I know somebody installed a Windows hotfix that created the blue screen of the VM itself. I just want to restore VM01. In order to do it, it's very simple. I just go to the virtual machine, select VM01 and click the restore button. In return, the XMS will query the AppSync server, which will show me how many backup were taken from that specific data store. And in my case, there was only one. So there is only one uh, backup that I can select from. And again, because I have only one uh, uh, snapshot that I took of that data store, I didn't wait for the next cyclic RPO to be used as a next snapshot timestamp. I have only one to select from. So I'm going to select it and select the location itself. So in my case, I'm just going to tell it other options. So for example, one of the interesting features within AppSync is what do you want the XMS or in our case the AppSync to do in case of the source VM still exist? Well, I just deleted the source VM, so I don't need to fail the restore or do anything like it. But just for the sake of the example, I just pressed fail the restore. This is again, what do you want me to do in case of the VM still exist at the source? I deleted VM01, so it's not there. I'm just going to press the fail the restore and select the mounters. So I'm just going to select one of the hosts that were used uh, for that cluster for that VM. In my case, I'm just going to select uh, pod 2 E601. So once I selected the host that I want uh, AppSync to mount that failed VM on, I'm just going to click the next button. And it's going to give me a final warning that I'm going to restore a VM to a data store that possibly contain other VMs, which in my case, the data store also contain VM02, but I'm not going to override VM02. I'm just going to restore VM01. So I'm going to review those warnings and agree with them. 
press the apply button and that's it from that moment on the xms will then go ahead call some upsync rest apis that will then go ahead and mount my snapshot volume which is in my case this one to that es6 host uh, restore the vm from it and then move the vm using storage vmotion from that snapshot store back to my original uh, source data store so just gonna wait a couple of uh, seconds and see how it look as you can see the vCenter is already starting to do its thing with resolving the signature snapshot the signature on the snapshot volume and so on and so forth in order to of course restore that VM eventually and from the XMS side you can see that uh, AppSync actually took a snapshot of this specific snapshot volume make it a writable snapshot which is this one and it mounted it on that specific cluster that contained the VM that I want to restore it to there were uh, eight servers so this is why you see eight initiator groups for that group so it's doing all of those things for me if you take a look again at the vCenter we can see it's already rescanning that uh, mounted snapshot volume across all the six also so they will see them as a as a data store and it's starting to restore the actual VM itself it's actually already did it and now it's using storage remotion to move the VM from the snapshot volume to the original volume itself and in fact we can uh, see it by clicking the VM and going to the data store we can see in which data store this VM currently reside and as you can see this is the original data store that belonged to both VM01 and VM02 so that's exactly what AppSync just did it's doing now the unmounting of the snapshot volume itself because we don't need it anymore only the original snapshot volume will still exist for future uh, restore purposes so based on the RPO it will be deleted at a different interval of the day that is more or less pretty much it. It's now just going to clean after itself, deleting the snapshot volume, and I've got my VM up and running and restore. All of this done directly within the XMS itself. You don't need to use the AppSync UI anymore in order to restore VMs or data store. It's all done directly from the storage administrator view, which is an amazing integration that we have between the Extreme.io XMS to VMware vCenter to Dell EMC AppSync. Thank you very much for watching.